Hi, my name is Paul Roberts, and I'm here to talk to you today about the only practice in true Shin Buddhism, the Shin Buddhism of Master Shinrin and Master Renyo. This is a very confusing topic for many people. It was extremely confusing for me when I first felt myself drawn to Shin Buddhism. And it's confusing for a couple of reasons. One reason it's confusing is because many of us come to Shin Buddhism from other Buddhist paths, and in any other Buddhist path you can think of, whether it's part of the Hinayana, or the Mahayana, or the Vajrayana, the Tibetan path, it's always about your practice. Practice involves discipline, it can involve study, it can involve keeping precepts, it can involve engaging in particular good works, the so-called six paramitas, and it's all these things that Buddhists are taught to do diligently, continually, over and over again, which supposedly will make you clear your mind stream and eventually become a Buddha if you continue to practice. Now, one of the fundamental ideas in Shin Buddhism that Master Shinrin says is that none of these paths work anymore for anybody. The paths of self-power are closed to us. I'm going to cover that in another video. But instead, in Shin Buddhism, there's only one practice, and that practice is listening deeply, deep hearing of the Dharma, called Mampo in Japanese. Now, this idea has also become very confusing, because many of the people who are teaching Shin Buddhism today are actually not people of the same Shinjin as Master Shinrin. There are many of these people who are very famous in the Sangha who don't even believe that Amida Buddha is a real Buddha or that the Pure Land is a real place. And because there are such variants with Master Shinrin's teachings, nothing that they say in terms of their Dharma talks can really be counted on to be true. And finally, what's really important to understand is that Amida Buddha, billions and billions of years ago, over 60 billion years ago, conceived of and came up with the Dharma path that was going to be just as useful to people of no particular ability, people who were ignorant, people who were illiterate, people who have Buddhist attention deficit disorder and can't calm their minds enough to meditate or contemplate. And the Dharma path he came up with was for these people first, as Master Shinrin says, for the evil person first, and then for the good person. For the ignorant person first, and then for the wise person. For the person who can't do any self-powered Buddhist works first, and then for the person who has some capacity. Now there are three components to listening deeply, and I'm going to explain them. I'm going to tell you what they are in language that's simple enough that anybody can understand whether you've been studying Buddhism for 40 years or you're just now looking at Buddhism for the very first time. The first part of listening deeply is listening with the head, listening with your intellect to understand the very simple basic teachings of true Shin Buddhism, the true teaching of the Pure Land Way. These teachings are understandable by anybody. Master Shinran tells in one of his stories how when he was a young man, he went out with Master Honan, his teacher, and the first person they ran to was an illiterate peasant who didn't know anything about anything. Master Honan talked to him for a short period of time, maybe a half hour, maybe an hour, I'm not sure. But at the end of the time when they parted ways, Master Honan turned to Master Shinran, young Shinran, I should say, and he said, that man's birth is assured. That's how easy it is to transmit and to intellectually understand the essential content of true Shin Buddhism. But at the same time, Master Shinrin says that coming to become a person of Shinjin is actually the most difficult of all difficulties. And the reason that's so is because it's not just a matter of listening with the head. After we've listened with the head and understood the content intellectually, now we have to listen with the heart. We have to listen in our deep inmost being to decide, to find out whether or not this Dharma message is true. 
And that's what most people are not willing to do, unfortunately. But let me explain to you exactly what listening with the heart is all about. And to start, I want to tell you a quick story you may have heard before about a man who went to see a Dharma teacher because he decided he was excited about becoming enlightened. He wanted to become a Buddha. So he sought out the Dharma teacher and he went to see him. He knocked on the door. The Dharma teacher opened the door and the man said, I want to be a Buddha. I want to become a Buddha. I want to become enlightened. And the teacher invited him in. Come in, he said. I'll make you some tea. We'll have tea together and we talk. So the man comes in and sits down and the Dharma master puts the kettle on and then he begins to make the man some tea. And all this time, the man is talking and talking and talking and talking. He just never stops. He doesn't shut up for a minute. I think this, and I think that, and I have this opinion, and I have that opinion. Yada, 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 and yabba, dabba, dabba, dabba. He goes on and on and on. Doesn't take a break, even for a minute, as he's giving the brain dump of everything he thinks in his head. And so the master starts to pour him some tea, and he pours it and pours it into the man's cup, the cup gets filled up, and the master keeps pouring and pouring and pouring until the cup is overflowing and the tea's running all over the table and down into the man's lap. And the man stands up and screams, what are you doing? What are you doing? And the master looks at him and he says, listen, you came to me asking to hear the teaching so that you could become enlightened. And yet you're so full of your own ideas, you just don't have any room in your head for what I have to say. It's like this teacup. Your cup is full, and therefore I can't pour you any of my tea. And so that's really the point here. In order to begin to listen to this Dharma, you've got to be able to empty your cup. You've got to be able to lay aside all your own ideas, your thoughts, everything you understand, everything you think you understand, everything you learned in college, everything you read from Carl Jung or from Joseph Campbell, or from watching Star Wars, or from studying Tibetan Buddhism, or Zen Buddhism, or any other kind of Buddhism, or reading any other kind of metaphysical literature, or listening to any other teachers, you've got to temporarily put it all aside. You must empty your cup in order to evaluate the Dharma propositions of our Dharma masters. You don't have to, you don't have to let go of your ideas permanently, but temporarily, while you're listening deeply, you have to let go. Is Amida Buddha a real Buddha, as Shakyamuni says and as Shinrin says? Or is he just a myth or a metaphor, as so many modern Shin Buddhist teachers say? Unless you're willing to empty your cup and lay aside your predispositions and thoughts, you'll never know. But if you empty your cup and you ask the Buddha within, you will eventually hear a definitive answer. You may hear words, you may just get an intuitive sense, but you will hear from the Buddha within that yes, Amida Buddha is a real Buddha, and yes, the Pure Land is a real place, and yes, there is no other path to Buddhahood for us in this day and age. All these are basic Dharma thoughts that we hear from our Dharma masters over and over again. Now, let me tell you, this idea of listening deeply is actually exactly what the Buddha himself said to do. There's a famous story, it's actually a sutra, it's called the Kalama Sutra, and it talks about a time when the people, uh, the Kalama people, they went to speak to Shakyamuni, and they said, we're just all really confused. We hear this from one teacher, we hear this from another teacher, we hear something else from you, we don't know who to believe. What should we do? And the Buddha, being the absolute smartest guy in the room, the singular world turner, the truly enlightened one, he said to the Kalama people this. He said, listen, don't believe anything that anyone says, including me, just because we say it. You have a responsibility to listen to what we say and then to take it inside and to ponder it deeply. And only if you can sense that it's the right stuff, that it's the true teaching, should you take it to heart. That's exactly what I'm talking about when I talk about listening deeply. So there are three parts to listening deeply. The first is listening with the head. 
to understand the basic content of our Dharma message. The second is listening with the heart, emptying your cup, setting aside your pre-existing ideas so that you can understand and listen until you hear from the Buddha within whether these teachings are in fact true. And the third part of listening deeply is being willing to talk to somebody who can serve you as a true teacher so you can ask every question that you have and answer every doubt that might be in your heart because until you've asked all your questions and answered all your doubts, you have not cleared the channels of faith. That's a phrase Master Renyo used, clearing the channels of faith, and you will not be able to become a person of Shinjin. As I close, I just want to read you these little passages from Master Renyo's writings that talk about this in a very straightforward way. So Master Renyo says, Meetings are occasions when, even if only once a month, just those who practice the Nambutsu should at least gather in the meeting place and discuss their own faith and the faith of others. Recently, however, because matters of faith are never discussed in terms of right and wrong, the situation is deplorable beyond words. In conclusion, there must definitely be discussions of faith from now on among those at the meetings, for this is how we are to attain birth in the true and real land of utmost bliss. And Master Renyo also wrote this, Even if you feel that you understand the significance of the Buddha Dharma, having listened through sliding doors or over a hedge, or over a hedge faith will be decisively settled only by your repeatedly and carefully asking others about its meanings. If you leave things to your own way of thinking, there will inevitably be mistakes. It has been said recently that there are such instances in these days. You should ask others time after time about what you have understood of faith until other power of faith is decisively settled. If you listen but once, there will surely be mistakes. So, I'm saying to everybody who's listening to this video that listening deeply is the only practice in true Shin Buddhism. It is the singular practice for us, but it is so critical that we actually listen deeply. It's critical if you're going to become a person of Shinjin in this life and a Buddha when this life is over, that first you understand the intellectual content of the Dharma message. And that once you've understood the intellectual content, you basically go inside and you ask the Buddha within to bear witness to whether or not this teaching is true. That's the only thing that matters if you're going to become a Buddha. Is this teaching true? Can you entrust yourself entirely to this teaching? If, if you can't answer that question, you're never going to become a person of settled Shinjin. And finally, don't be ashamed, don't be afraid, don't be proud. Go find a good teacher of the Dharma, a person of Shinjin, and ask every question you have. Ask once, ask twice, ask a hundred times until you get every answer you need to get so that you can have no more doubts and that you can freely entrust yourself to Amida. I wish you all the best. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me through this video, and I'll be glad to answer them. And I'll see you again soon with several videos that I'm putting together on the three pillars of true Shin Buddhism, the three fundamental ideas that define our simple, universal Dharma message.